In this video, guys, we're gonna look at what advantages do human traders have over algos? Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so we hear about this, man versus machine, where's trading gonna go and all that kind of stuff. So I wanna address that in this video and I wanna let hear your comments, guys, and thoughts on this because it's such a broad subject and it's super interesting to me because as someone who's traded for so many years now and loves the markets, loves being involved with the markets, loves talking about trading, loves trading, loves everything about it. I'm super interested to see where we're gonna go and also interested to be open-minded about different ideas and different opinions on this. So please, comments in the comments section below. Okay, so. What advantages do human traders have over algos? Let's just quantify algos, guys. I don't mean algos as in an algo is trading a specific VWAP trade or something that's actually placing an order. Algos as in a strategy that's trading for you. So a machine, if you like, that's sitting there and trading as opposed to you sitting there and trading. So we talk all the time that, hey, you know, machines or algos have got no emotion and they can execute with precision and they don't have any bias and all this stuff. And yes, that's very, very true, but let's take a step back or maybe five steps back and just look at the origin of it and how it all starts out. So an algo is programmed by a human. So putting to one side the whole machine learning type thing, but I still, I'm still on the same, on the same field with this. Humans are adding their, their seed to the algo, so to speak. So you've got an algo that on its, in its kind of really simplistic form is like execute in this way. But if we go to the full complex algo, there's still something which we're saying to it, go and find out. So even if you go into the fully complex, and by the way, I'm not a dev, I'm not a coder. So, you know, some guys, you can correct me on this if my kind of terminology, etc., is wrong. I'm looking at it purely from a trader's perspective here. But if you're taking it to an algo, hey, go and execute this in this format and do some learning from it and adjust, you've still got to seed it with some kind of um, goal or something to go down. You've still got to give it a guidance and you're still putting your opinions into the code or into the way it's got to do things. And so, yes, you may well have a, a bot there that sits there and chugs what's believed to be a profitable strategy. And whilst the markets are in the same conditions, that robot may do very, very well. But how will it adapt and adjust to future market conditions? And let's just think, okay, well, if everyone knows as well that that's what's happening in the current conditions, then I might come along and say, well, I'm gonna program my bot to beat that bot because I know that that bot is trading these current conditions and I know exactly what it's trying to do. It's trying to buy dips, it's trying to do that. So why don't I front run that bot? And then that bot, you can see how humans are the ones planning what the bot does. And even if the bot is still kind of over planning each other, there's still eventually going to be a point where, um, you know, there's still no edge specifically, like an, the old, um, utopia of there being a machine sitting there and just churning away and making a lot of money. Not talking about HFT here, guys, which is a different thing, of course, done videos on that, but you know, predicting the market, so to speak, and trading purely on the market conditions and making trades, you're gonna find that they battle each other, so it almost rules itself out. So back to the point, before we go off on a tangent, back to the point, the advantage of human traders have the big one, guys, which is completely unquantifiable, completely difficult to measure, is intuition. You know, humans are very good at taking in data and having a feeling about it. You look at life itself, you're driving, and, and this is a great analogy because you see this, seen this recently in the news. You're driving along and you're in the correct lane and you're about to go straight on, let's say on a roundabout, you're in the right lane, you're about to go right in the roundabout as you can on a dual carriageway. A guy's in the left lane, he has to stay in the left lane and go straight on. He then turned left, so he's gonna go there. You can either go straight on now in the right lane or you can go right, for example. If you're not in a round of country roundabout, this point doesn't mean anything to you. Just imagine you're at a traffic light. So then the guy, and you just see, you only just know, you're like, I know that guy's on the right lane. I'm gonna back off and I'm gonna let him do his thing because he doesn't look like he knows where he's going. Something about the vehicle he's in, the way he's driving, the acceleration, uh, all the things you're taking in and all of a sudden, sure enough, he carves right in front of you and you're like, well, that's why I didn't get sideswiped because I just thought he wasn't in the right lane. Or if you're a motorcyclist, you're riding along and you're like, that guy's gonna pull out, man. I just know that guy's gonna pull out. He's looking straight at me, but that guy is just gonna, and pulls out and you're on the, off the throttle, you're on the brake. You just know, right? And that's okay, we can talk about other areas of life as well, by avoiding situations where there's a group of people who think, oh, I don't like the look of that, I'll dodge it or, or whatever. 
So driving is a great example because we actually have driverless cars now we have um you know the autopilot thing not to name brands etc but you know the ones I'm talking about in tesla and etc so i did name brands then but i'm not kind of saying that this is a bad thing but we have instances where and also i think it was actually the google cars that so wasn't teslas that were crashing into other cars and other cars are crashing into them because the behavior wasn't normal they weren't expecting it and so you think when you're day-to-day -day driving you just get a feel for something that's going to happen and you'll back off or you'll get out of the way you accelerate this that and the other and you'll take in things like the type of car the driver you will because you will just know from experience that that maybe is the type of car that is going to cut you up that isn't going to indicate that is going to do this it is going to do that and so you start to use intuition and robots haven't got that yet they're just going on well he's in that lane we can't assume that he's going to come over and we're going to go straight on and they get sideswiped so that's very similar to trading guys is that when intuition with trades of course you've got to have experience with it but then when intuition comes and we can say you know what these conditions aren't quite right these aren't the best and what we can also do as traders is be very simple about stuff so we can add complexity when we want to and we can dial it back when we don't want to whereas machines i would suggest that get more and more complicated and more and more complicated. You've got algos out there, uh, but I believe there are, but it's true or not, I don't know, but you've got algos out there and some of the big banks that are trading away and some of the humans don't even know what they're actually trading or how they're working. Now that says it's getting more complex. But in reality, guys, we know for trading perspective, sometimes you have to dial back the complexity and keep things super simple. It's like, okay, well, listen, the trend is up. I just need to find a place to buy a pullback. Well, the pullback last time was 50 ticks. The pullback before that was 50 ticks. The pullback before that was 40 ticks. Right, well, I'm gonna buy a 50 tick pullback. I'm gonna have a, you, you can simplify things and put the edge in your advantage where Possibly the machine has learned that or algo has learned that, but maybe they've added too much complexity and you're simply saying it's gone up five things in a row. We've got Fed coming up. I'm going to stay out of it because this thing is going to stagnate now. And, and you know from history and intuition that maybe is going to be the case. And does it happen? No, not always, but it does a lot of the time. And so people say that it's utopia of kind of bots and that's the way forward and, and there's definitely a big place to play for uh, bots and algos guys without a doubt and you know i'm a kind of advocate and I'm, I'm you know learning more myself as someone who's in pure manual of how to you know maybe use bots and algos to do some of the heavy lifting and of course we already do it now with scanners and stuff which are not really a, an execution bot but they're doing some of the heavy lifting but maybe the the kind of utopia if you like is the a hybrid of the two so using algos to do certain things things but then you're harnessing the intuition i believe that's where if we can get to a situation with that we can get the very best traders their intuition their ability to simplify things their ability to process data and their ability to have an uncanny knack for making great trades combine that with an algo that is really sophisticated in terms of getting all data and presenting it to that person and doing this and and having them working in harmony then you'll have a seriously seriously powerful trader and i think at some point in time in the future that's what we'll see certain hedge funds having they'll have a hedge fund manager or some star superstar traders under that manager they'll have some algos kind of bolting into and they'll be customized to the person as well so you know you'll say oh you're very much mean reversion of good catching trends you're very much this right and the algo will learn from the trader and it will add some and it will complement so it'll be like a bionic soldier if you like so the weak spot of the soldier obviously the fatigue the muscles etc can be boosted up by uh, these skeletons and stuff but that's what i think will happen and i think that's when we'll get hedge funds that are absolutely killing it you know they're making so many great trades because they're combining the power of the two rather than at the moment i feel that we're trying to go down one or the other everyone's going down to pure algos kind of get a bot that's doing everything for me kind of learn trading on its own some point they'll get the combination right and that will be a seriously seriously uh, good place to be invested uh, if you are looking for that kind of thing that's my opinion on it let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as i said not proclaiming to be an expert on it just looking at it from a perspective as a trader anyway whatever you're doing guys take care and i keep the risk managed and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye